Um, the, the third item, the Simmons and Sutter paper, the, the issue that I've got with it is there are a whole bunch of different effects involved in it. Uh, the high pulse alarm offices tend to be in the southeast, wow, where the hotel, where we have a larger number of fatalities because the mobile home population is a lot higher. More tornadoes happening after dark in the winter time and uh, moving faster. And so I'm not completely sure that we're really seeing that there's a whole bunch of things that, that will, should increase your FAR, but that will also increase fatalities that are that are together. So I'm not sure that actually just saying let's reduce the false alarm yeah. rate will do squat on the fatalities. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. I just have a quick follow up to that. I'm an anthropologist, so I'm thrilled to hear you talking about culture, even if we have something of a different definition of it. Um, but I think you know one of your last questions was getting to the issue of what is the arrow of causality, you know, where, how is this related to each other, and um, a plug for some, you know, social science methods, ethnography in these, in these offices would help you understand questions of false alarm rate, happiness, um, you know, which involves embedding a social scientist and using a toolkit of social science methods to really, you know, talk to people in semi-structured interviews, and I think would probably add a lot to the study, maybe using this as a, a platform for asking some deeper ethnographic questions. Yeah, the problem is you gotta go to 50 offices and do this. <laughs> well, I could probably do a sample that would maybe be completely representative, but would give you insight to yeah. which direction this arrow of causality might be going and what the points of causality are. Have, have you read the Gary Fine? I haven't read the whole thing, no, but I look forward to yeah, it. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty amazing. Um, I'd like to see how the, the, the negative offices, the, the bottom third, you know, they seem to, to be consistent through that whole time period. I'm wondering if, you know. And the middle ones. The middle ones don't change much either. Right. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, average is average or whatever. But if you were to do another SFA and get the bottom ones or whatever, there might be a different group of offices than they were in this one. That's here. right. That's but, you know, over the time period that you show, those offices didn't really show a lot of improvement or anything like that even though they have been you know advances in technology during that that time frame so i guess i'm, I'm kind of wondering out loud here if, if you have a a negative uh you know score or, or skill and you get management attention you know to try and drive those numbers up and get better warning whether that has a, a negative feedback and reduces morale in the office and that sort of yeah that's a good question um to tell you the truth, my impression is that I, I was surprised at how little of that there is. I, I mean, the, the fine book points out, you know, the semi-autonomous regions and offices, sem, uh, some offices operate very, and, and there's, there, in some cases, there's a reluctance to, to do that sort of thing. Uh, fine talks about the J Jack Kelly era, and Jack Kelly, you know, General Jack got in there, and he really raised the flag up the flagpole about this, and he got some reaction, but it's not clear to me how effective that top-down is on influencing there, um, and, and whether, uh, but, but there certainly is, it seemed like, uh, as you alluded to as well, I mean, the, the, the offices that uh, have you know, events where there are fatalities uh, or missed tornadoes, it has a big, at least temporary, negative impact and maybe an overreaction kind of thing. I don't know how long that lasts, but, um, but it's a, it's a, the organization is not that big. You know, it's, it's 4,000 people, and so people kind of know everyone, and, and, and dealing with problem offices seems to be a delicate issue, and it's done discreetly, you know, with trying to pr preserve. I mean, the, the thing that you know, I want to stress is that performance of all, I mean, this, you could say that service is, is for the country on the whole, the national, is, is pretty damn good. There's some offices are doing maybe really, really good, and the others are doing good enough, you know. So, so there also gets into that, how do you address in a way that, that you know, is effective in making the changes you want. I'm not saying that that, that negative pressure is necessarily, you know, top down or whatever. Um, all the offices, they know what their performance statistics are each year or whatever. And if a forecaster is, is thinking about, POD and FAR when they're trying to issue a warning, you know, that, and that's in the back of their head, that's probably a, a negative feedback. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I think, and I think that happens. Yeah. Especially after the, the previous event that was missed or something. I had a couple of comments. The, the first one is that 
I, I think you're going to find, if you could measure it, that, that this culture, and, and better culture meaning better performance, is also tied to better science and better understanding. Because I think the two go hand in hand. And second, having been a manager in NOAA, not at Weather Service Office, but two different parts of NOAA, uh, it's hard to change the, the culture with our performance management system and our performance evaluation system. Mm -hmm. And when I say hard to change the culture, also hard to change the science, the education, how people perform. And it's a delicate balance. If, if you're too heavy-handed, you can, you can hurt things. And if you don't do anything at all, you're not likely to make any change. Right. And so it isn't necessarily easy to do this. Final comment, I serve in two different parts of NOAA, and I found different cultures in the management sides of the two different organizations. And, and one part of NOAA I didn't think supported the mid-level managers very well at all, and the other part of NOAA did. And that could be a component in all this. Sure. It's part of your 54 percent. Right, right, right. When you, when you talk, you, you said you did the interviews with the MICs at the top 10 offices? Yeah. Did you do interviews with the MICs no. at the bottom? Because to me, I wouldn't be surprised if they would have answered the same way. That our office, we do really good things, we're supportive in our office, our people are. You know, you, yeah, that's a, that's a valid criticism. I, I did that, well, I didn't do it for. I just didn't want to go there. I didn't know, you know, I'm calling, if anybody, you know, it, it was politically uh, difficult for me to do that, and so I elected not to, but that's, that's, that's true. It would be very interesting to see if somebody was in, outside the agency, you know, if that had been commissioned to do that, that would have been a very interesting set of interviews, yeah. Before we go to any more questions here in Norman, I want to give a chance for the folks that have been patiently waiting on the telecon to ask questions. We have the telecon and go to meeting for another 10 minutes, so we haven't gone over. So, if there are any questions from the virtual audience, go ahead and fire them off now. Uh, this is Eastern Region. I, I have a question. Do you compensate for uh, in situations where you get isolated tornadoes versus clusters of tornadoes? Because a study came out a while back that noted that, uh, before, you know, if you, if you get one a tornado at a time each episode, you, you run a pretty good chance of missing it, but if you get a series in the same day, a cluster several in a row, you may miss that first one, but you're much more likely to get the second, third, and fourth, and increase the lead times and the PODs and all that. So I'm wondering, did you compensate for that? The answer is no. no all, all we looked for was uh, F scale and the, the number of events. That's the only thing we took into account. So that seems, to me, that seems like an important variable. And one other thing, I just a quick question: uh, Are you planning on doing this in other program areas? Uh, I uh, early on, I looked at other um, warning uh, performance metrics for for flash floods and um, uh, uh, severe thunderstorms, and uh, you see uh, the signal there too, but not as sharp, not as crisp. And I think that's probably you know, due to a variety of things, probably, especially with flash floods, the difficulties with verification, and the, I, I guess the severe thunderstorms seem to be very routine now, and there's not as, not as demanding or something, but the signal for severe thunderstorms was there, but it just wasn't as clear-cut as it was for tornadoes, tornado warnings. Okay, thanks. You're welcome.